welcome back to the channel. You're probably not going to get a lot of talking today, but you will get a lot of pressing. It is our push day. And we are coming back round since that short session where I have ticked off my milestone. Now, today we are going to surpass it. So it has been 10 days since that session and we've got our eyes set on some bigger goals today. So touch wood, it's all going to get ticked off safely, which it will. And I will share some more thought process with you uh, behind the progressions and behind the set structure that we are going to take today to progress that lift in particular. Now, when it comes to pressing, the method that we are going to use today is something that Jordan has used for himself and something I've actually used a few years ago that I'm coming back to right now. Now, the reason why I was unable to use it as well some years ago is just simply down to not being patient with my low progressions. Whereas right now, I know I can safely use this system of the additional set on my big compound lift, the main press of the day. So it's pretty simple, guys. Set number one, rep range is six to nine reps. And then we are adding an additional set, which will be the second set that will be in the rep range of three to five reps. So the whole thought process behind it is we are ticking off a higher rep, set, higher rep set first, still going all out and going pretty heavy. In the second set, we are basically touching a load that we never have before uh, in a lower rep range, providing we feel safe enough to do so. Now, generally, that first set almost preps us and primes us to be able to perform and perform the second set, which is heavier. Uh, and then, in essence, because the low discrepancy between that second set and the back offset is so huge, when we go into that third set, which is the back offset, the weight literally feels like nothing. So what you'll notice today, guys, the second set addition not only allows us to expose ourselves to loads that we don't generally do, and allows us to kind of touch the loads that will lead to long-term progression. Uh, and that set addition actually allows us to progress our back off set much more, just because the load just feels so much lighter off the back of that set. So, without further ado, guys, push day going down. Let's go. Please, yeah. The usual, start off some lat work, as my lats pretty much get trained every single day, um, every single time in the gym. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail regarding this because I've already covered it numerous times. So if you wanna know the ins and outs of why and how, across these movements, I have covered it in previous videos. So listen back. And always ask questions below.
So, yes. Now, whenever I'm in a set, my main focus is not just being a number in the logbook. At the forefront of my mind is always the quality of my execution and the quality of the set. So when I look into a set, my main objective is how can I improve from a last week's performance across anything I do. Now, if that means taking one or even two less reps with better quality, so fucking be it. My goal is not just beating a number. My goal is first beating the execution and then the number, provided my execution standardized. So today, one rep up, but with significantly more control and tidier reps at the back end of the set, which was the goal initially. Going to the set, my intention was to literally match the reps with better execution today, not beat any numbers. That is how you should always use that progressive overload. Not just the numbers games, guys, not just the loading game. It's always, always quality over quantity. Yes. My fucking shoulders. Antoine Valant would say, the pump is the cure. Quite literally, shoulders are bursting. This is uh, one of my all time favorite dial exercises by far. It's, uh, it's very humbling, but that's what we want. I find a lot of different variations that people do with any lateral raise it almost turns the whole body exercise because they get to a certain point in loading where they're throwing the whole entire body into it and, losing a ton of, and using a ton of momentum. Now, the single best piece of advice we can give you for growing your shoulders is kill the momentum. Once you actually go into any movement with half decent form, not using any momentum for your shoulder work, uh, your lateral raises in general, trust me, the pain and the pump you will get is unlike any other, and I think that will definitely translate to some extraordinary shoulder gains. Cannonball delts incoming, guys, let's go. Write that down.
ready to go. So just some activation work before pressing. Now, before any compound press, I literally like to do one, maybe two sets. Barely any weight, just literally getting some blood into the muscle. Now, with pressing motions, especially ones that don't converge, so ones that have that plane of motion, it can easily turn into just a lift where you're pressing up and down. Now, the function of your pec is to bring your arm across. So that's what I try to, to mimic across any lift that I do. So now, moving on, I will go into my incline smith, which obviously doesn't converge. So doing an activation movement like this allows me to keep a much better connection with my chest whilst I'm actually performing the exercise, because that's the goal. I'm here to train my chest, not just the lifting itself. So if you are struggling to feel your chest, this might actually help, guys, alongside of proper execution and setup and push exercises. Yes. Okay. Quiet, yeah? Quiet. Quiet, yeah?
Here we fucking go, motherfucker. Here we fucking go. I'm gonna have to get 13 reps here. I'm gonna have to get 13 here. Take a pause. 13 fucking reps, let's go. Mike, you should film it, please. Could you film it? Team of a fucker. <laughs> and the biscuits, let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. All fucking day. Work, motherfucker. I'm gonna be shorter. Yeah. Three, two, one. My bad. Hold on. Here we go, motherfucker. Eleven. 
fucking job. Mm. Right. So since this last session, I've actually added a little bit of lateral work. Why? Because I can handle it from a recovery standpoint. Side laterals are very, very, very easy on the recovery and they are very low demand, but great stimulus for the side delt. So I need a lot more shoulders. I need a lot more width. Therefore, if I can handle a lot bit more work on my laterals, I will add it because your shoulders can never be big enough and I need more shoulders. Now, context. The reason why I'm adding this now, not earlier, is because my recovery is good. My food is high, therefore I have the fuel to be able to fuel these actual extra set additions. Now, your training has to match your food intake and your recovery capabilities. That is the ultimate key to progression when it comes to hypertrophy. You need to have that understanding and you need to be able to do only what you can recover from, not what you can actually do because let's face it, we could all do a lot more work, but can we recover from it? Probably not. And if you can't recover from it, it's, no ben it's not beneficial, it's of no benefit. How much is it? How many? I got 11. Did you get 11? Yeah. Good. Good work.
not sure if any of you can relate, but as soon as I get in the set, it's impossible for me to count any reps. I don't know why. This is why Mark and Meg are absolute gems, because they always count my reps. If they didn't, there'd be no way I'd be able to keep a good, accurate, consistent logbook without filming all the sets. So, big up Meg and Mark. Straight into three plates. Three plates for me. Then it could start and then you could have three. Yeah. Uh, touch that. Now, when it comes to uh, a tricep bias press, this is definitely my favourite variation. Just the position it allows you to get in is absolutely fantastic, so pretty fucking pleased with that. Good purchase from Jim Leco, big up guys. That back bench one back. That's bench one back. Two two. Two two. The, the block is there as well, so it should be okay. What? The block is under it as well. The block is there as well, so it should be okay for you to get into. We don't need the length on that. Trust me, just trust me. Yeah, you want this back Just more? trust me. No, no, no. You're normal place. Because these you are trust me. Okay, okay. Trust me, bro. Do we want this bandits? Yeah. Yeah, yeah stick the band on. Right guys, cable flies 101. Now, it doesn't matter what bench height it really is. If you're trying to target either your mid portion of your chest, your upper, 
or your lower. What truly matters is your arm path. So as you can see here, guys, our arm path is actually converging down and across. Now, this will bias a lot more towards the lower portion of the pec. As you can imagine, that is where the tension is actually pulling through. If I wanted to target my upper pec here, all I would do then is bring the cables lower and then drive my upper arm up. So as a reference point, guys, mid, lower and upper portion of your pec can be trained on this cable fly variation, but the only adjustment you have to make is the cable height, not necessarily the bench height, because as you can see here, guys, as Mark abducts his arm up and then drives upper arm down, the cable line moves across here down towards his lower pec. Now, if the goal was mid pec, it would be adjusted slightly here, again, in line with the mid pec. Upper pec would adjust the cable down where his arm would move down here, and then it would come up all the way up here. Let me know if that makes sense, guys. Any questions, comment below. Feels good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, feels good. Doesn't it? Open up a little bit more. Now, isolation with compound work. Far too often, I see people treat the isolation work like it doesn't matter, like an afterthought. If you are truly wanting to capitalize on making the most progress you can possibly make in the gym, every single set of every single exercise has to be treated the same as the big stuff. So, you need to treat the little work with the same intensity and the same level of focus as you do the compound work. It all matters and it all contributes towards your end goal. You cannot treat the isolation work like an afterthought. If you do, you are leaving a lot of progress on the table. Write that down. So, the pec fly variation we had in before this was quite similar. Um, it was more targeting uh, the mid pec, but the seat was at a different angle. And we actually had the seat a little bit closer to the cables, which it does change the resistance a little bit of the cable, meaning that it overloads its heavy in the shortened range, uh, sorry, in the range. So now all we've done is pretty much adjusted the exercise and adjusted the seat position so that one, we can target a different division of our pec, but two, it's still a very similar exercise, so we're not doing something completely new. Uh, so it still makes sense in terms of programming when it comes to exercise selection and swaps that we'll make. Whenever we do make a swap or a change, it will literally be for a like-for-like -like exercise, not something completely novel and new. Uh, and it will always be a swap for an exercise that is equally as effective as the exercise that we had. Very too often I see people make swaps for exercises that literally just don't make sense. So when you do make a swap, for whatever reason, whether you're stalled on a lift, or you know, you come up to a new training block, or just a lift that don't feel good, make sure that you are swapping it for a lift that matches the goal and is just as effective. Now. The pump is the car! Talking about it first. Yeah, definitely. 
<laughs> Planks though, still do. Oh, man, 100%. I just fucking, I just wanted to crack on today. Planks just get me ready, man. Everything after planks is easy. Oh, yeah. They're the hardest bit. I fucking hate them. Uh, can I have eight plates and I'm going to go with ten? Eight plates out of ten? No, eight plates, then I'll go with, I'll, no, no. Uh, yeah, just eight plates and then I'll work with ten plates. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning in guys, that will be wrap for today's session, big big session ticked off, extremely happy and I can promise you this guys, well, I'm just getting going this off season now, uh, this is only week 11 of my off official off season so we're just getting momentum going now with not just performance, but feeling like I can manhandle a lot of the weights in the gym. And I think post-show, especially when you reverse out of a show correctly without just getting sloppy, it really takes time for you to get your body weight to a place where you feel safer under heavier loads. So you have to take your time. And you have to make sure you stay patient and don't bite it too much off that you can chew at any given time because that will only hold you back or lead to an injury. So, guys, whatever you do, make sure you stay safe. Stay as accountable to honest progression as possible and take your time. You know, we're here to do this for a long time. And most importantly, guys, have fun doing so. Appreciate you all. Take care and peace out. Like, share, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. I'll see you again soon.